Uh, hi everyone, uh, this is going to be a uh, video uh, about my one experience that uh, actually I had on Holy Friday. Uh, as you all know, it's actually this week is actually the uh, Paschal week okay, uh, for Eastern Orthodox Christmas. Not Christmas, Easter, Eastern Good Friday. So uh, it's actually a few weeks after the uh, Western calendar, the, you know, because they actually go by the Julian calendar. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the experience I had uh, yesterday, actually, uh, yesterday night, you know, um, you know, it was fine because I was actually uh, on time for the service. It was called the Epitaphios. Uh, basically, in Greek, I think it's the Epitaph, the commemoration of the burial of uh, Jesus Christ. So um, it's, it was in both Greek and uh, English uh, since the um, church was a Greek Orthodox church, but there was one very strange experience at the end of it which actually made me realize wow it was yeah it was extremely triggering okay uh, let me just tell you a little bit about what happened because it actually triggered my religious trauma syndrome and after that i was like realizing oh my i need to get get home as soon as possible i shouldn't be associating with too much with the you know the old time members the older guys or uh, women, uh, maybe not the women, but the older guys in that church. Okay, so you know the thing is this. Uh, that particular Greek, there are only there's only one Greek Orthodox um uh, church here, and then followed by uh maybe a Russian Orthodox church, and then there was a, you know, another church which was a call. Uh, it was supposedly a Western Rite, uh, Orthodox church, but um the patriarchate was actually. I mean, the, it's a bit more complicated because the link of that particular patriarchate was um. Uh, the the yeah, in Orthodox Church they go by this whole thing about what which patriarchy are linked to and everything, uh, for canon canonical status whether it's recognized or whether it's not, and then uh it was linked to uh one of it was actually the. The uh was it the Ukraine the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, uh key patriarchate uh, which is actually a very highly contested, uh patriarchate uh yeah but the the strange thing is this you know where I was uh, okay. The lady be, 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 uh, to my left during that 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 liturgical service, um, you know, she was uh, looking at the you know the order of the service, the book, the hymnal or the uh, the, the, the the book, and then you know um the book was given to me by someone the guy next to me. He he went he switched onto his, the one on his computer the that order of service, uh, so he had knew he knew the order because everything was like you know online as well, um, and the thing was that when I was actually looking through the book because it was actually both in Greek and. Uh, English. So whenever the can the cantor, they are female and male cantors, cantors. So basically the chanter, uh, when they switch onto uh, Greek, I was like you know uh you know like switching back to the Greek. And I mean, being someone who actually studied uh medieval and Byzantine studies uh, in my uh, graduate school and even who can read Greek and Latin, um maybe not not very successful, not very well, but who can at least figure out the sound and the meaning and everything, uh and yeah, I mean, I have the copy of the New Testament, everything in Greek, and uh, it's interlinear and everything. And uh, I'm I'm hoping that I can improve, obviously. But the thing is, when the woman, I mean, at the end of the service or somewhere near the, you know, the, when you were doing the procession around the church compounds, um, this is part of the epitaphios. Uh, that, that, that woman next to me was like, she's an old-time member. She was quite old, so uh, I'm suspecting she's like maybe 60-something or something like that. Uh, and then she, uh, her daughter was the one who brought her, and obviously she was being uh, catechized, so she would be, uh, eventually be received into that that Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, she asked me, "Oh, she, you, you at, while walking towards me, you can actually read Greek." I said, "Yeah, uh, uh, I check, I actually, um, you know, I can, I can read Greek because I studied in Bible College." So she was a bit, "Oh, okay." She was a bit, uh, I guess she was kind of impressed in a way, but uh, I mean, it's not like a big deal to me. I mean, it's like. I said, oh, well, uh, I just know it's in reading knowledge. It's not really for communication or composition. Uh, unlike people who've done it in the uh, University of Toronto who can, you know, like compose a whole essay in Latin and everything. Uh, but but, but that, that's the thing. But then later on, she said, oh, she, she, there was a guy sitting behind me uh, at the end of the service. Oh, this is a member, long time member, the first few members. And he asked, asked me, oh, uh, so where are you coming from? I just said, oh, I attend another, you know, Western Rite Church. Uh, Orthodox Church and because you know the thing is this in Singapore there are so few Orthodox Churches not just not just Eastern Orthodox or even Oriental Orthodox Churches the moment he heard that there was like oh Western right what's that uh? because you know like he asked me for the church name he was like he didn't know the name what's your, who's your Archbishop oh I gave me the name of the Archbishop and then oh how long have you been in that church and he said oh it's not canonical it's like I was like how do you know so much and then it's like you know the one thing that kind of like struck me later on was like, oh um, 
he said, um, your Western right people, uh, Orthodox, or uh, your Western right, uh, probably just uh had uh celebrated Easter a few weeks before, and right, uh, y'all can't be Orthodox in any way. I was like, wait, yeah. Even the thing is this, I I I can't realize this because he he was like um this man. I'm not sure how old he is. Like he looks like he's maybe in his fifties. Yeah, he looked like he was in his fifties or sixties. Well, he was in his like, he looked he was wearing spectacles, but he was bald. Uh, he was a bit overweight. Uh, yeah, he wasn't like tall and overweight and everything. But the the moment he said that, I was like, oops, doesn't sound good. But then later on, he was talking to one of the chat that the cantors who was the one, the first one I talked to in in that church, like weeks ago or months ago, uh, actually last year. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. He was telling him, oh, you know, uh. This cat, he was pointing to me. He said, "Oh, he's attending a church which is probably not canonical, whatever, whatever." Then I said, "Then you know, the, the strange thing was the cantor just said, mm, you just attend a few more times to find out whether it's really not canonical or not.'" But but why was that guy in that in that spectacles doing talking nonstop about whether it was canonical or not? And that the the fact that it was a Western right church had really made made it like uh because you know there's Eastern right there's Western right, um the Western right thing has been around. I mean, it's just an attempt to sort of like to, to, I don't, I wouldn't say westernized, but it's just like the whole idea of uh, you know the uh, it was something that was being uh, revived in the recent years, um, the recent decades, bec- uh, all thanks to was it few people like Sentikon of uh, uh Sentikon um yeah, this is or Russia or Moscow, uh, was it Sen and who else is that um, Saint John Maximovich of Shanghai, I think so, yeah, all these uh different saints or, or people in the Russian Orthodox Church and the mission to <coughs> the mission to the West and to Asia. Um the, the thing was this uh I, I don't want to talk about canonical or can not canonical whatever you know but you know the moment he said that about canonical status or it's probably not apostolic because uh you know what um there's some churches in the because he, he knew that uh he learned from me that the the, the priest was actually uh, the head priest was actually uh, Filipino Chinese. Also, oh, you know, you see that maybe in the Philippines there are a lot of these so-called self-style churches which are neither really Orthodox or uh, or Catholic because uh, um, they are neither the here or not there. And, and so basically, he's just saying that he's uh, he's trying to say that we all schismatics and heretics. And and was like at the point he said that I was like okay, this is, sounds very judgmental, very unkind, very. And you know the thing is, is I will tell you very honestly the doc. The doctrinal basis, a theological basis, so far as I've gone through the first week of catechesis and a few a few times round, it, it's very orthodox based on what I know. But why then? Why then they end up becoming that kind of like it's so tribal? And I told you know the funny thing is this: when I told uh, a few Christian friends from uh, different traditions, and one uh, two friends from a Presbyterian tradition. Uh, in fact, one of them was the one who realized, oh, you know that that, that was years ago. He said, oh, you were once you in uh this Korean church that 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 is actually being housed within my church. Uh, his church uses uh that that I mean that was where the compounds of that Korean church were were, but it was actually uh I mean it's not that church building official, but it's uh it uses that church building, yeah, uh or it loans it from from that church, um. Which actually conducts your services in English. So you know the thing was this. My friend was like, "Oh, once you happy?" And I said, "Yeah, I guess I was happy." But 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 you know the thing was, I realized that I wasn't very Protestant in my 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 theological outlook, and I needed to sort of do something about it. But um, and and I wouldn't be able to you know like bring myself to really really, uh, call myself Protestant anyway because after the years of searching and everything, I realized the more I read the Bible, the more, um. I live my life and and everything. I became more and more closely aligned with a very, either a Catholic or or, or an Orthodox way of looking at things, and it's just weird. And and the thing was just when that man, okay, that man who was, uh, uh talking about canonicity, you know, I was like, why are people in the EO that means the Eastern Orthodox churches, churches, the Greek church, why are they so concerned about canonicity and especially you know, now you know that what is happening in Ukraine. It has led to the splinter, three splinter branches of that 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 uh, Orthodox Church of Ukraine. Uh, it's a long story. I'm not going to comment. Uh, there's a key patriarchate. There's a Moscow patriarchate, and then there's a so-called autocephalous one, which was granted uh, autocephaly by uh, 
by the ecumenical patriarch. But the fact that he said, oh, you know, we have, uh, the guy was saying, oh, we in ecumenical patriarchate, we don't have Western right at all. So, you know, it's very uh, standoffish. It's very, oh, yeah, we are the ones who use Greek and uh, Byzantine right. And I was like, are we worshipping God or are we worshipping an idea of how a liturgy should be like? I, I hate to say it, but you said the point I was like, oh my, this sounds so tribal. And I was like, I hear, I heard it from a Singaporean, a guy who was a Singaporean Chinese. And I was like, where did that kind of superiority come from? And, and you know, the other, even the cantor wasn't speaking like that. He was saying, just find out, just go to a few more times to find out if it's canonical. And... I tell you one thing, at the end of that thing, after that service, okay, I spent a while, a short while talking to another guy, the guy to my uh, right, he's a very young, young chap, okay, I'm not sure what he's doing now, he sounds like he's actually studying university, but uh, he told me that he was a young convert from uh, Catholicism and he has been Orthodox for maybe at the most three years, uh, but he was, uh, yeah, he, he just got the catech into the catechumenate phase for one year and he's like, Confirm as a, an orthodox boy, but told me it was like, oh, well, it's a long process, and then he was like a thing, everything. But, but after that conversation, which was relatively short, uh, he was going to eat like stuff with his, eat, have dinner or supper with his uh, other friends from the some of the other people in the church, and I was like, okay, I'm going off. I'll see you all because I have to work and everything the next day, and on the weekend. So okay, he said, I hope, hope to see you soon again. Uh, you know, I think it was like when they were all walking on different directions, I, I couldn't wait to actually just leave. So I, 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 literally, I literally walked really, really fast to the bus stop, which took about maybe 10 to 15 minutes walk away on the, on the, how many, like across how many streets, how many blocks. And, you know, at, when the moment I got home, I was like, I wanted to hold myself in my room and I just like either cry or just pray and say, God, what did I get myself into? You know, I have been to that church three times that, that yesterday was at that time. I mean, I one time was like maybe years ago when it was in a different building. Uh, the Then there was a, the second time, which was last year. And now this is the third time. But I was like, wait, what did I get myself into? It felt like, I mean, it wasn't just, a, it wasn't so much the doctrinal thing that, 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 that kind of disturbed me. It wasn't doctrinal thing, but it's like, why are we caring so much about uh, all this ethnicity and all this thing? And it's like, we, we, you know, that's one thing where I told one friend who was actually a convert to Coptic Christianity, which was like the, you know, the, the cops, COPT, uh, COPT, cop, the cops, they, they were the, you know, the original, um, like the church in Egypt that was uh, evangelized to by St. Mark, one of the apostles of uh, Jesus Christ. And it's like, you know, they are not considered Eastern Orthodox, they were Oriental Orthodox. But he told me, now you know why I didn't stay on in the, I didn't go to the Eastern Orthodox Church. I chose to be in the Oriental Orthodox. He said that, um, you know, he said, it's so tribal in the Eastern Orthodox Church. It's like, and he said, you mean, you mean tribal as in like political and, and, and uh, ethnocentric? Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, that's what, what it means. Because that, that other friend was, um, he's a convert from a uh, Malay background. I was like, he said, but you know what? Um, sometimes, you know, you know who to avoid in church. Just, just if you feel unsafe, um, he said sometimes he feels he feels unsafe even in church itself. It's not that, uh, because you know there's no perfect church. He said, you know one thing? If you feel like, he told me, oh, if you feel really unsafe and you feel that you're like being, uh, you know, the kind of in-group, out-group thing uh, that is being applied, uh, you, might, you might want to just consider go, going to church just to, you know, like have communion with God. Okay, uh, because that's the main point of church, right? and then after that, uh, leave, quickly get back home, okay, don't don't talk too much, you know, some people, because he said, some people are just busy buddies, you know, in, in, in uh, what did we say in, uh, in, in, in Chinese, they say, K, we say here, it's a K, po, ji, po, uh, means like, you're just, 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 they just want to talk, they ask you questions, the man was interrogating me, obviously, he was doing like a background check, and sensor, and you know, guess what, it was so funny, because when he was talking to, uh, to the cantor, and I was asking the cantor, what about the churches in Korea, or whatever, uh, uh, no, then he said, there's a law, there's a law, then he said, you should go to the one, you know, St. Nicholas has all the beautiful iconostasis, I don't go to a church of the iconostasis, some people go to churches for different reasons, like the icons, everything, okay, I have more than 20 icons here in my home, okay, uh, the small ones, but mostly the small ones, I have some real big ones, which are medium sized ones, which, is, which I hang on my back on my door, and of course, um, yeah, whatever. But it's not the main practice of my faith because I don't pray to those things. So 
you know the whole thing is this my 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 religious trauma syndrome was actually aggravated by the whole thing about high demand religion after what he said yesterday night i think my my whole rts my religious trauma syndrome was totally reignited again i was like oh wow that's why i'm going back home i'm talking so much about it. i mean my protestant friends who are still protestants won't understand it but um and as i said you know one of them she's like she's not protestant even protestant she's more like evangelical new new style uh self-style evangelical uh like the pentecostal he should probably can say oh it's not god now you know now you know you become very very self-righteous saying that uh it's my punishment from god again just like my health issues but you, you get what i mean this is the whole point i can't realize it's also tribal tribal and and the problem is this new rts is very highly triggered by the whole thing about tribal tribalism because tribalism you know when you have in group out group that's the whole idea that some people those people who feel that they don't belong they'll feel a sense of guilt and uh, shame okay so and and this reminds you again of ptsd <sighs> i don't know what i'm going to do i told some friends about it and one of my friend who the one who actually told me uh taught me that i was happy in dream in the church of korean church last time he said maybe you want to give the greek orthodox churches a few more chances just like without thinking about the people i said i don't know i really don't know what's going on uh I'm, they're so it's so tribal i i feel that like i can't stay on in that kind of thing and then uh but but just like what the cop said you know the coptic friend said um you know what the best thing is just go church wh- whatever denomination or whatever group or tradition go and leave because he said he has been to the greek church a few times but because he's a coptic christian he cannot take the you know the communion and then uh he said the only place where i can do it is in the catholic church because there are you know agreements between the catholic church and the coptic church so um yeah because of the unit movement and everything uh the unit movement is a recent movement where you know like decades ago where they say they're trying to branch together different branches of uh like oriental and eastern orthodox christianity with and even yeah with the with the catholic church and uh even even the anglicans too like some different branches together so that you have common communion and on the flip side you know what the, the priest in the <laughs> the <laughs> The OCU Church KP, yeah, the, the, he, he, did, he did tell me, he said, you know what, I mean, Kevin, if he, he did, I haven't told him yet about this, but I'm going to have him told the sub whatever about this, because, uh, but but he did, he did say, you know what, y'all can actually have communion in a Catholic Church under extreme and due rest, because it's allowed, but uh, although, of course, I don't think you need to, because the, the, the church, our church is still around, uh, it's been around for 10 years, actually. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like a whole thing. But I'm, I'm like really, I, I had this experience, and I was like, whoa, what is gonna happen? I'm like, I get, I get a sense that it's so tribal and no tribalism. Okay, it triggers my, my whole sense of PTSD. I don't know what I'm gonna say. Okay, so um, yeah, but that, but that's basically my experience. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna go back to that. Uh, I mean, but now thankfully I said I said you know I work on weekends, so I don't have a chance to go to church anymore. Uh, not unless my weekend is free, okay. And then if my weekend is free, then the next question is which church do I go to, uh, without triggering my R R T S R T S. Big question. I don't know. Okay. I can only pray. Okay. And ask God the guy. Okay. Um. Uh, that's it for now. Okay, anyway, I'm off to sleep because I have to work tomorrow. Uh, but surprisingly, the weather has induced my sl- sleeping in late. But uh, I can't do, afford to do that tomorrow. So, and tomorrow's Mother's Mother's Day. So I hopefully I can get something to you know give my mom. Okay, for or for lunch as a t- kind of a treat or whatever. Okay. So anyway, have a good one tomorrow and tonight. Okay, bye bye.